So, um, Heron Preston has this T-shirt, right, that I thought was a fucking clever, clever idea. And again, you know, him being, I think that's probably the reason why he's been so successful. That he's not really a fashion dude. He's come at it from just like a cultural connector, a marketeer, a brand dude. He's kind of been able to fuse all those different interests and kind of present it in the medium of fashion, which is probably why he kind of, you know, adopts this whole idea of like it being an art project. A lot of people say it and it kind of comes across a bit wanky. It comes across a bit, you know, a little bit self-congratulatory. It comes across a bit like you're trying to intellectualize screen print and tease, but you can really see it in Harry Preston's work that he's actually coming across it from an artistic point of view. But I've always said like for my friends that always complain about stuff and, you know, moaning about the situation they're in or things that they're not doing, doing or where they should be in life i've always kind of had the adage that you know just look at all the things that you're not doing or sorry look at the person that you're hating on or you think has you know got their place unwarranted and just look at the things that they're doing outside of just the craft forget even the the craft what they're doing whether it's djing whether it's making art whether it's writing whether it's presenting whether it's being a, a photographer whatever it may be forget the actual work and look at what they're doing outside of it and look at and write a list of them just check just make a little list da, 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 da. And see what you're doing or not doing from that list. Then make another list and see what you're comfortable, to, what you'd be comfortable to do in order to get yourself where you want to get to. And then maybe make another list where you're you're able to do something where you, you know swallow your pride a bit and make another list that you could actually do and think you know what even though I'm gonna cringe like hell and I hate these people I don't want to be around them I need to go to at least a couple of them things and I think a good tip a good kind of starting point would be this T-shirt from Heron Preston that he did right it's, it's the um I think it's the influencer all city right it's a really funny T-shirt I'm not sure if it if it sold well or if people got it and stuff like that but I remember when I saw it first time round it kind of made me laugh and it was kind of very on point with what's kind of happening and it's like this T-shirt says influencer all city and there was one that basically had a list of all the places that influencers are, tend to go when it's kind of influencer season right and that usually starts from about i think from april right from when um coachella starts that's basically the first time you see ev all the influencers out doing their thing and this is kind of a good example of it let me see if i can get it out onto a new tab and see if i can get the full picture of it so this is the influencer influencer jet stream right so if you're an influencer out there and you want to your kid you're like oh my god man i haven't got a chance no one's giving me an opportunity to do things this is what you need to do right these are the places that you should be going to just as a look when it kind of stuff is hotting up right um coachella miami art basil fashion, uh, fashion week burning man grammys um weekend caviar casper the oscars Cannes film festival ibiza cipriani social Barts, um tulum freeze art fair tulum freeze tulum freeze paris london and fashion uh, whatever new york um, fashion week right um uh book fair ps1 uh the box mr chow's carbone the mercer hotel amara mora momo hotel costas no name Ch no name chateau marmont la, la baron the standard boom boom uh boom room sorry sub um mercer bar petty cafe um cafe what or is it is it is it bar petty or cafe ferdy cafe uh, matashuya nobu malibu soho house levanu john and vinnie's oak um up and down cerulean tower hotel so if you're an influencer out there and you're again you're bemoaning the fact that these people are ahead of you and they're doing more things than you should be doing this is essentially your cheat sheet in order to go where you need to get to now again do you have the funds to do it are you able to sacrifice maybe not going to the trendy festival that your friends are going to and maybe, you know, going on your own to these kind of places and maybe linking up some kids that might be hanging around there? Because, again, it doesn't you don't necessarily need to get into any sort of places. This is the thing that kind of people don't really realize. You don't need to get into them these places. You don't need to actually go inside Coachella. You don't actually. Well, maybe you need to, but. I think just the being around the vibe, being around the atmosphere, just soaking it all up is so important. I know for me, when I was first kind of getting moving around in London and trying to connect with people and trying to see where I could kind of fit in and where I could kind of do something, most of my time was just spent going to sneaker releases, going to exhibitions, going to store launches, going to um, um, capsule collection launches, going to um, sneaker events, what that meant at the time, but a couple that Cro Crooked Tongues did, um, going to a book launch, going to an art exhibition I mentioned before, right? Going to maybe a gig of a particular artist, like, I don't know, when Subtrack first come up on the scene, you know, a lot of kind of cool um, in the know people wanted to be the first person to kind of see him play. Now, probably not more, not so much because, you know, he's, he's basically a huge 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 pop star now for the most part in that kind of electronic field but going to see certain artists who are kind of in the kind of cultural zeitgeist and just being in and amongst the mix and seeing these people in real life and i think there's something about and again you don't need to say hello you don't need to introduce yourself you can maybe spy you can maybe do a head nod you don't even need to talk to them just being in and around it and maybe forging a new community for yourself i would say it's probably 
more advantageous. Instead of going there and talking to the, you know, the Heron Pressons of, of the world, maybe it's more advantageous to talk to the other kid who's trying to get to Heron Preston, who's got maybe a t-shirt, who's got maybe a line, and then probably like talking to, oh, shit, what's this thing you're about to give this dude? Oh, it's basically my brand, da, 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 da. You get talking, you get to help him out with something, or maybe you connect on the kind of just a friendship level. You just want to hang out, right? Because I know for me, personally, growing up, especially in Stratford, especially in Canning Town, wherever you are really in the world, especially if you're in the niche, in the industry, it doesn't matter where you are, it's quite hard to find people who have the same interests as you, who live locally, who are in the same area. So when you do meet them, even if it is people that are, don't live anywhere near you, but you end up being internet friends, you end up swapping um, IGs, you end up DMing each other, liking each other's pictures, just generally you know shooting the shit over the internet. It's a lot better than having nobody and just seeing stuff from the outside. I think there's something to be gained. Even from even if you just want to be a consumer, forget tra- these, you know, forget these esoteric uh, lofty goals. Even if you just want to be a consumer, I think there's something really advantageous about being there in the scene and soaking it all up, right? It just makes you a more discerning customer. You come across a bit more legit. You never know. Staff members in the store might treat you better because they know you're really about this life. You're actually committed to knowing things. You're asking the right questions. You're trying to research stuff. You're trying to get your knowledge up. Yeah, like those things can go a long way and again you never know what the future may hold one or two questions here and there one or two um evenings spent in a shop hanging around after hours hanging out with these guys in the bar you never know what may happen it, it doesn't necessarily always have to be a monetary thing it doesn't necessarily need to be a career thing it's just the idea of that you know this thing that you've dedicated because again i think streetwear fashion music art um, um, DJing culture, nightlife culture. There's something very specific about it because we spend so much of our time obsessing about it. Like I know I do. Essentially, I do this podcast to just talk about the things that I love, right? Happen to all live in that world, right? I just kind of cover it in the number one streetwear podcast in the world because streetwear for me kind of encompasses all of those things in my idea, right? Because that's where I found out about techno through streetwear. I find out about DJing through streetwear. I find out about trainers through streetwear. I find out about art. Oh, all of that stuff is kind of and come and the umbrella. And I want to kind of reclaim it and not, you know, give it this kind of like poo pooey shitty existence. But I think there is something really to be gained about being in place. And I think nowadays, especially with the internet, especially social media, it's kind of, you know, it's been a bit of a cheat sheet because you can just straight away get to these people and speak to them directly. But I think sometimes Sometimes you're not really in a place to ask any good questions or you're, you're not in a place to be of any value from the internet sliding into someone's demons asking them if you if they can intern for you because you don't really know you don't even know what you want to do right you're just asking them for help because you feel as if like this thing that you've been obsessed about all your life for the most part of it or it feels like all your life you feel like you just want to be involved but you don't really know what you want to do yet so i think the best thing to do to figure out what you want to do is just to be around shit to get around it see what it's like it's like um it's like when you're, um, have you ever had the same ambitions as your friend and then they end up working there and they tell you how it really is and you suddenly get put off by it? It's happened quite a few times, people, right? Like um, sometimes, I don't know. It's like when you have, it's like when I had um, had a dream, oh, you know, you're younger, you have a dream that you're going to work in game, right? The shop game because you're obsessed with computing. And then you finally end up working it. You realize, oh, just like any other job, it's fucking garbage, right? Like I like games, but I don't like working in the shop. I just want to be involved in the gaming industry. So already, just from working there, you've already crossed one thing off your list. Okay, cool. Now I know I don't want to work in game. I want to work in the industry of computer games. That might be design. That might be being a community manager. That might be working in marketing. That might be whatever it might be, right? It might be being on a streamer, on Twitch or something. But it just takes actually doing it first. That's the main thing. But I honestly do think this influencer jet stream from Heron Preston that I have on here on the screen is definitely an influencer cheat sheet, I would call it, right? This is an influencer cheat sheet. If you want to go out there and impact the world, if you want to go down, then touch people you want to go out there and just be a part of the culture and you know get the opportunities that you want to get in life whatever you have to offer go to these places now it's going to take you maybe working a shitty job here and there it's going to take you sacrificing not buying the next fucking jordan one retro or the needless or the need uh needless pants or this new t-shirt or that new supreme it's going to take you sacrificing a lot to get to these places because most of them are going to cost you a lot of money not just not just the tickets but the flights and the accommodation alone you could always get cheap flights you could always um do a bit of couch surfing you could always hit up people on social and find out if anyone's going to the same thing and sleep on someone's couch there's things that you could do hustling wise but i think what is really important is really and again i think there's value in the kind of there's a lot of value that comes from actually saving some money and investing it in yourself in this kind of influence instead of just sitting on instagram and dm people especially if you don't know what you're doing i think some people just don't know what they're doing they don't know what they want to do i watched this clip one time of i think dana white during the ufc press conference and one kid coming up to the microphone 
And he's like, oh, yeah, I want to intern for you. Then I'll do anything. But all right, you know, just spewing that whole, like, you know, hustler, hustler talk. And then it's like, you know, not convinced at first, but then you kind of, you know, OK, cool, man. No worries, dude. I'll, I'll, I'll sort you out. Um, see me after and bring me your CV. And the dude's like, oh, actually, I don't have my CV on me now, but I'll talk to you later. It's like, what? Why did you make that whole? And, and again, I don't know if the kid lives locally from that press conference is. Let's say you travel. Let's say you drove two hours, an hour there. You drove two hours, an hour there. You had your, you had it in your mind that you're going to get on that mic no matter what. You're going to ask Dana White, the president of the UFC, the shot caller there. You're going to ask him to intern there because you love MMA and you love everything about the UFC. Then you finally get on the mic. You, you ask him the question. He kind of, you know, doesn't really vibe with you first. He kind of thinks you're a bit corny, a bit cheesy. He thinks it's a bit played out. He kind of, you know, he kind of, you know, acquiesces like, you yeah, know, cool. I'll give you a chance, kid. See me after give you a CV and you never have your CV with you. That's and that again is um it's not 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 for a shade that kid but that is kind of symptomatic of most people online they don't really know what they want to do first they just want to they just want to reach out and ask a question first of all and it's not necessarily the best thing so honestly I recommend if you're an influencer then you want to or uh, um you know you want to kind of get on that you know escalator and it's again it's just it's always it's always annoying these things isn't it when it happens because whenever the successful people you know get to where they want to get to they end up kind of turning around and poo-pooing names like even if i'm saying you want to be an influencer i'm 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 just people right there are going to be like cringy like oh, i don't want to be one but why not if you've got good good taste if you're usually on stuff early if you've got a good eye if you've got a good eye if you've got um a, an interesting point of view if you um are i don't know good you know you're maybe a charismatic person online um, there's something about you, you've got a bit of star power about you online, then why not um, tap into the influencer thing? It's not a bad thing, but I guess, you know, when when the when the, when the the top tier people make it, they usually always turn around and kind of shit on the thing that kind of made them what they were, right? It's just like, come on, man. Like, but anyway, um, that's neither here nor there, but I recommend you check it out. Um, this is a little, there's a little, I'll put a little link to the show for you guys what, listening via the podcast, but I recommend you check it out. It's definitely a, a cool little t-shirt that Heron Preston put together, but I would call it the influencer cheat sheet, not influencer jet stream, but then this is basically a list of the stuff you need to do if you want to make it there. Um,